So, uh, Ter Teresa Paleo Smith, uh, um, uh, Palacios. <laughs> Palacios. You know, when I, when I was in Spanish class, I got to be Teresa because there is no Tammy in Spanish. So, <laughs> and I thought it was so cool. Anyway, um, she's the Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion at HSF Affiliates LLC, and she is a council member for the NDILC. She also has more than 20 years of experience working in real estate, in the real estate industry. She's a frequent speaker at national and local industry events. And um, Hope Atul, Executive Director. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Desiree crossed that off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Hyphen M? Haven. Haven. Okay. President, CEO, and founder at Faith Community Empowerment. She serves on the U.S. Army Advisory Board, the Pacific Council on International Policy, the Western Partner for the Council on Foreign Relations. In 2013, she was recently honored by Los Angeles Magazine as 10 Inspirational Women of Los Angeles. Welcome. Vanessa Montanez, Vice President of Sales and Business Development, Manager for the National Specialized Sales and Strategic Markets for U.S. Bank Home Mortgage. Vanessa has been in residential lending for the last 21 years, where she has applied her expertise in loans and real estate. She has worked for major lending institutions such as JPM Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and East West Bank. Welcome, Vanessa. So I'm going to moderate this panel, but in the interest of time and so that we make sure that everything that they want to deliver gets delivered, uh, I know that a few of them have PowerPoints and um, Aiden has film. So I don't know if we have the film ready, that we can start with you. You don't want to be first? Okay. All right, we'll start with Vanessa. All right, you want me? You can come up here. Sure. Yeah. All right, we good. Bring it up. Awesome. So I want to recognize today that we lost a wonderful lady. Uh, she's one of my favorite poets, Toni Morrison. And um, I wanted to start out, because it's a women's conference, I'm just going to give a small little shout out to her on one of her amazing uh, poems. It says, Beloved, you are. My sister, you are my daughter, you are my face, you are me. So I just wanted to start it out because um, she's just amazing and she was one of the first African Americans to win a Nobel Prize in literature. So, okay, so as we get started, I'm going to talk a little bit of why US Bank and why I love this organization and company. But none of this would be not possible if I didn't acknowledge my amazing team that I'm blessed to work alongside. We have great bankers here, we have private wealth, we have philanthropy, my mortgage family, and also the foundation. So please, if you can stand up so we can acknowledge this wonderful team. Yes. Is this a clicker? I know. Okay, next slide. Okay, so why U.S. Bank? Well, believe it or not, we are the fifth largest bank in the U.S. And we are the sixth largest lender, mortgage lender, in the United States. So home ownership is really our strength. And this is really pivotal for the conversations that we're going to be having today. And we draw strength from diversity. We embrace diversity by forging inclusion and diversity in business in all aspects. Whether it's home ownership, whether it's our team members, um, and our relationships with their key stakeholders. And at US Bank, you are empowered to make a difference in the lives of our customers. And one of the things I love most about US Bank is the company culture. It is really awesome. Next slide, please. So because we're here for diversity and redefining leadership, I wanted to draw out our numbers. These are of 2018. I know the numbers are way higher because we merged with another, we acquired another company. But there are 72,758 employees across the U.S. footprint, and out of which we speak 71 languages. And what I really like is that 
of all the staff, whether it's starting out to upper management, we have 59% women. So um, I want to give that a pause, please. <laughs> And then for the next slide, we also really invest. We put our money and our heart out in our communities. And I know Jill will be really happy as I mention this because she's part of our grant and foundation department. So we give out about 57 million across the US, 14 million with United Way, 4.1 billion reinvestment into communities, which is fantastic. And also we're in the top 10 uh, companies for diversity and inclusion. All right. We can go into more stats, but next slide, please. So what does this mean? We have all these wonderful accolades and awards from other peers and other companies, and that says something about us, that we are Forbes Best Employer for Diversity in 2018 and going. Uh, we've also had NBA Summit on Diversity and Inclusion with Marsha and her team that were here. But we're doing amazing programs for homeowners, and one that really stands out that's really near and dear my heart is called the American Dream because that is actually what it's called, the American Dream. And I really feel like the American Dream really stands out for us at home ownership. Why? Because it's only a 3% down payment program and there's no mortgage insurance. And on top of that, US Bank is committed and gives back $5,500 for either closing costs, down payment, or as I call it, the mini facelift in case the house needs a little fix. Uh, we have $5,500 there which is one of the major obstacles that we have is down payment and that affordability and savings. So that's why I'm really passionate about what we do at US Bank. Our headquarters is in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. So enough about US Bank, but we're gonna go into the next slide. Oh, wait, this one? Okay, which one? Oh, perfect, all right. Thanks, Teresa. So this is my next shoes that I'm gonna be talking about, Women's Home Ownership. And I've been really a proud member and supporter of NAWRB. Desiree is a really good friend of mine. I've had the pleasure to be part of this organization for over five years, I believe. Time goes in the blink of an eye. But what I really love is the organization is her vision and drive, and also the sisterhood. When I look across this room, I wouldn't have had the privilege of meeting a lot of amazing superstars, as I call them, if it wasn't for this organization. And lastly, it gives us all these tools and resources. Just look at the caliber of panels that we have. These two, three amazing rock stars that I have. I mean, I've had the pleasure of knowing several of you for many years, and it's just fantastic. So at the heat of the moment, we're going to get into women's home ownership. So these are stats that I want to bring about because we created, I'm a delegate spokeswoman for NAWRB, and what that means is across the platform we get to talk and give these classes to other women and other realtors and other people in the industry. But why is this important? Because women are an untapped market in home ownership. Seriously, everyone looks at the millennials, the diverse markets, what about women? So we're gonna talk about a little bit about that and why you wanna really pivot your market and go into focusing on women. So for the last 30 years, women have outpaced men buying homes. This is huge, you're like, what? How is that possible? So from that, 18 million of homeowners uh, in 2014 were, sent, were women. From that, 10 million of those live alone. That's a huge number. And then the rest were either living with family or they were the head of the households with two or more people. Then in 2017, NAR, the National Association of Realtors said, you know what, we wanna know what's going on with the home ownership. So they did a study for themselves and they figured out in 2016, 18% of all the homeowners out there were women. That's huge. Compared to, sorry men in the room that are single, it was 7% for men. So that gives you that purchasing power of, wow, that's really compelling and telling the story. <coughs> Home ownership keeps rising year over year for women getting more homes out there, okay? So, on the next slide, and we're almost done because we wanna hear these amazing other panel speakers, 50.8% of the population are us women. We are the majority, actually. And according to the Department of Labor, 57% of us participate in the workforce. Not every woman is working full time. But what I found interesting is in 2015, 16.4% of mothers 
were the head of households and working were 42%. Now from four, those 42% that were head of households that are women, 59.5 were white, 17.3 were African American black, 15.8 were Hispanic, and 7.3 were others, like a blend. But what that says is women have that purchasing power. We are $7 trillion just in the US. 85% of what we're purchasing is the women. We are making those decisions. And because this is home ownership, 91% of the women are purchasing homes. They're making that decision. It's not the husband. It's us women who are married or in a relationship say, you know, I really like that house. It's functional. I like that house. It has that good feeling. And with that, women are outpacing men in education in every level. So in 2017, 57.3 of all women were getting bachelors compared to men. Masters, 59.4. Doctoral, 53.3. So that's saying the story. We are now purchasing the homes. We're making the decisions, we have the purchasing power, and we're smarter than the rest. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the argument. No argument there. We said gender lens. <laughs> gender lens. So why do you want to target women? Well, because, and this, by the way, you will find all this great information in the Women's Home Ownership Report that just came out. That's right, it's in your book, so please read it. It is a treasure. Um, so, home is her sanctuary. <laughs> There's pride in the accomplishment of buying a home. It's a stable home for your children. You're supporting your communities. You have lower crime rates. Women look for low crime rates when they're moving in. They also want to look for good schools. And they want, believe it or not, smart technology homes like the smart or what is that called? The ring for security and then the nest. Yes. Yes, the nest home. I'm like, oh my god, I can do this on my phone. I don't have to be there. So we want smart tools. Um, and then what I'm going to say is become a member of this organization if you are not already because it's just going to increase your business and create that sisterhood. I want you to market to professional women and also oh, do open houses catering to women. That is, when you see a woman coming into that open house, she is a buyer. <laughs> Treat her with respect. Know that she has it together and she is there to make that decision. Not so much her peer or her spouse or whoever. And also, this I do know for some of my successful realtors and lenders out there, they're doing successful uh, workshops for women and families. So when you're thinking of doing an open house or doing a financial literacy course, cater to the family because nine times out of 10, the mom doesn't have someone to take care of the kids, so have a little section in the room with some coloring books or something, and have somebody else to help you with the children, and that way the mom is focused on looking at things for the home and how to get those tools to buy a house. So that's enough about me. I'm gonna now turn it over to my amazing uh, team here, so thanks, Tammy. Perfect. And, and I've got a presentation too, but I don't know how to do I do have to give Vanessa credit because I've known her for many years and I want to thank all of you for being here. You guys are the real troopers, right, uh, in the room that are here to really learn about our business. So I head up diversity and inclusion for HSF Affiliates, and a lot of people don't know who HSF Affiliates is. We are part of Home Services of America. We are the uh, franchise arm. And Vanessa, several years ago, two, a couple, I've known Vanessa because she was part of the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, where I was president in 2015. That's the first time I met Desiree. That and, long. right? It's been that long? It's been, believe it or not, it's been that long. And um, Vanessa, a year ago, I called her because I really, really was very interested in this organization. And she was so instrumental in telling me about how incredible this group was and Desiree was and that I really needed to join. So I want to thank you, Vanessa, for your leadership and your encouragement and how excited I am to be part of this group. So. First of all, just to tell you a little bit about uh, our group and uh, sustainable home ownership, which we're trying to talk about. Um, you know, what my role is in diversity and inclusion, I was hired two years ago. So I'm pretty new in the role of diversity. 
Um, I actually was a realtor just like, if, if there's any realtors in the room, please raise your hand. We've got some realtors in the room. So I was a realtor um, on the local level. I worked for Prudential Georgia Realty and Prudential Georgia Realty was bought by Berkshire Hathaway. We merged when Prudential sold its assets uh, in the real estate side to uh, Home Services of America uh, that was, unbeknownst to me, a Warren Buffett-owned company. So we are owned um, by Warren Buffett, and with that, there's a lot of power and there's a lot of responsibility. Uh, and I met the CEO of the organization, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, back in 2015 when I became president of the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. And he said to me, you really need to come and work for me because we really need a lot of work in diversity and inclusion. We want to be uh, the company that's known in that space and really want to help in the sustainable home ownership for all of the communities out there that we want to mirror. So that's what my role, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never done this. I'm not in HR. I've always been in the field. I've always done real estate. And I've run de several divisions of the company because I moved into the reload business and, and I did a lot of group moves and business development and I also ran a HUD contract. But because of all that experience, I think I have the knowledge and capability of understanding what it takes to be an independent contractor and to work the field in the real estate uh, space. So it allowed me to operate, to, to challenge myself, right? Which Tammy always says, always be learning. And with this role comes, like I said, a lot of responsibility. So one of the things that we wanted to do as an organization is really make sure that we mirror the communities that we're serving, right? And that means women. Right, because women, like you heard Vanessa say, 80%, my numbers are 80% of all consumer decisions are made by women. Did you know that? That's a big deal, right? And not only that, but there's a lot of minorities that are impacting our economy, and they're gonna be making a difference. And like you heard Erica say, the vet community is probably one of the largest communities for home ownership. 21% of all home first time home buyers are vets and civilians that are working that work in that environment. 19% of all home sellers are vets. So it's really important for us to touch each of these communities. So I decided how do I create a program that will benefit our company but also grow our organization by bringing in women-owned independent contractors that no longer just sell real estate, but own a piece of the dream. Because it's not just about homeownership, but it's about making sure that women and minorities are part of the franchise process of owning a company, because that's where real true wealth is created. And so that is what my role is. I actually work with our sales division to increase our franchise sales opportunities for women and for minorities and for vets. Anyone that's interested in expanding the brand and really helping and growing in wealth, that's what we're there to do. And we have a lot of work to do, especially in the sustainable space, because we are challenged because most minorities and a lot of women are in major industries and also areas of country that have gotten too expensive to be affordable. And even though they have high salaries, they're still very difficult in purchasing homes because it's not keeping up with the cost of living. And renting is even more expensive, so how do you save money, right? When you can't even Set, you know, you're, you're barely, 50, 60% of your income is going to pay rent. So, you know, these are all the challenges that we look at and we are trying to determine how to help so that we can create opportunities in that space for more women to become homeowners and also to become business, owner, business owners as well. So I'll let it. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, again, my name is Hayden Kanim, and I run a nonprofit called Faith and Community Empowerment, formerly KCCB. And we've been at this for 18 years. 
um, and our acronym is FACE, and we say we bring the face of God through service and lift those who are faceless, and I think it's very appropriate uh, for our panel today. Um, before we start off, I, I would like to show a ABC7 News coverage of one of our success stories in terms of helping um, individuals who have the challenge of low income, high rent, no down payment or hardly any down payment, as well as high uh, housing prices and low inventory. And so maybe we could start off with that. Um, that was the argument. The enduring legacy of redlining. Well, while we're showing this, actually, um, one of the related topics that I did want to highlight is that it's not just getting into the home, uh, but also sustaining. And there is this history in the United States in which minority com communities have consistently been redlined. Uh, in terms of being left out of whatever uh, mission that sets them apart in that they are focused on home ownership. Uh, when we as a country talk about affordable housing, we, think of, uh, we tend to look at rental properties, but really home ownership is another area that needs that same kind of attention. And so they're looking at policies, uh, uh, including CEQA, which is the uh, California Environmental Quality Act, that really was intended for good in terms of when there's development, there should be consideration of what kind of environmental impact it may have. But a lot of, um, what do you call them, NIMBYs, not in my own backyard, folks <laughs> have used that to actually slow, through the public hearing process, slow down uh, development, which ultimately you know, costs a dollar, <laughs> millions of dollars, every day it gets delayed, and so then developers uh, tend to give up, and so that has been a major um, policy that really is hurting the inventory uh, stock of housing in California. So that's one, but they're looking at multiple angles. Is it on? Okay, great. Stussy. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a great ring. Really? Yes. <laughs> Rob, thank you. Buying a home in Southern California is out of reach for many people, but a program that helps low-income wage earners purchase a home is getting some rave reviews. 22-year-old Vicente Rivera just bought this $249,000 condo in Lake Balboa. His down payment, just $2,900. This was made possible by the nonprofit group FACE LA, which stands for Faith and Community Empowerment. FACE works with the city of LA and private companies to find affordable housing for first time buyers. It makes me feel amazing. I'm literally on another high right now. Like, I feel so high up life, like my dream has really came true. Vicente says he'll actually be paying less for his mortgage than he did for rent. For more information about the program, go to facela.org. Well, it's a unique program designed to encourage students with special needs to express themselves in front of an audience. So he, he happens to be 22 years old, actually the youngest in the history of Los Angeles, uh, helping with their down payment assistance program. And his income is 34000 and the mortgage payment, <laughs> um, he, he was paying rent $1,500, but the new mortgage payment right now is $1,000. You know what, so this is a case in point. So we, this is one individual, but we helped another individual who happens to be a young lady, 26 years old, $36,000 income in the same unit in Lake Balboa, but she was camera shy. <laughs> and um, then we invited her to come to our home ownership there. So again, I think as women, uh, what I see consistently is that uh, we really need that platform that leads to greater opportunities and greater invites. And I find a lot of times that women, even though we may be doing the same things, that we're not getting that platform. I didn't know that 80% of consumer decisions, purchase decisions are done by women. I think we need to keep each other informed and be able to spout out that data point uh, to more decision makers. And I think that's consistently true. Um, our agency has been around, as mentioned, 18 years. And when we first started off, um, particularly in the Asian market, no one, we weren't around. <laughs> we weren't visible, no one was reaching out to us. We did our first fair and 600 people came out. And out of the 125 who did a credit score check, 
95% had credit score over 750. Exactly, right? <laughs> we took that all the way to the bank in terms of all the um, different financial institutions that we approached them initially before the fair. Um, it, it was one of, I would say, patronization or no interest. <laughs> but we somehow got them in the room, and when they saw the potential market in which they have been missing out on, that apathy, disinterest, patronization, whatever, changed into genuine excitement. And I think that even in the women's uh, targeted market, I think that the more we can continue to share those data points, that there could be a greater shift in really making things more friendly uh, to women as well. Um, so it's just so for, um, as an organization, I think that there's some great programs out there but for women, for minorities, uh, even millennials, people don't know these programs exist. And so an agency like us, we do more than housing counseling agency. However, in essence, at the end of the day, we're a trusted advisor that really is a navigator. And so we're bringing all the different resources from government, financial institutions to being a financial advisor, helping them with their budget. So we look at where they are, <laughs> where they want to go, <laughs> what the gap is, and then strategies um, of how they will get there. In addition, we are connecting the experts, and I call them three C's. Um, compassion, capacity, and commitment. I've been in this industry for a very long time, and there's a lot of people who say, yes, you know, we want to work with you, but very few are really truly have that heart for the first time home buyer because, you know, many of us are commission based, commission paid, and for the same amount of work, why not? You know, you'd rather get greater pay. First time home buyers, low income individuals, they're not going to bring that, right? But we found and identified over the years some really great people who have that compassion. Second is capacity. As mentioned, there's a lot of navigating that needs to be done and knowledge. What programs could be layered? And so this gentleman, we helped him with $115,000 of down payment assistance, which came wow. from government, wow. from banks, uh, from other wow. internal programs, bringing it all together, right? Um, and so that capacity, we need someone who has that capacity. Uh, we, are one of, we are a trusted advisor, but we're not the one on the ground bring that loan opportunity and the down payment opportunity. It's really the lenders that do that, right? And then really it's the real estate that where the rubber meets the road. Because there's just, I mean, even for myself as committed as I'm into this space, if I'm a seller, I just want to get rid of my house and get into my new home, right? So it typically it takes twice as long uh, for escrow to close when you uh, take into account down payment assistance program. So you need that real estate agent that has that commitment and the capacity to convince that seller to sell it to this first time home buyer with the down payment program. So again, we've been able to find and identify these uh, experts that we work very closely to make this happen as well. Um, I do want to say that for as a housing counseling agency, um, for those who do come through agencies like us, they have 30% less likely um, that they will go into foreclosure because we are with them. And then, even if they do get into trouble and they come to us, their likelihood of getting a low modification increases by 280% plus. So again, um, we as an agency, as an example, we've been able to come into these type of meetings, right? So we meet the people on the top. So maybe the people on the bottom and in the middle, they may not know everything or maybe they may not be well trained, whatever it may be, we're able to escalate to the top and be able to help some of these individuals um, as well. So two things for you, how do you get the word out? So mm -hmm. that more people know about it, real estate professionals yes. and the general public. Yes. Yes. And 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 what do you do about sustainability? Because yes. that's a that's a pretty good number for I us totally agree. Right? <laughs> yes, I totally agree. And there is also a two hundred thousand dollar difference in wealth between a renter and a homeowner. Absolutely. So a, a great deal. So I would say if I really knew the answer, you know, I'd be a rich person. <laughs> 
But let me just share with you what we have done. So we were very blessed that ABC7 through actually, I know Cheryl, uh, uh, the CEO of ABC7, we were on a, um, we were both honorees at an event. And we were able to maintain relationship. And I was very pleasantly surprised when we sent out the press release that she made it a point to send her camera crew. So I think having good relationships with people in power, especially media as well as faith organizations that have linkages, as well as financial institutions also who have their network by working together, we've been able to send out. We've also created our own database. We have over 30, 35,000 plus names of leaders of leaders. And if I meet you, get your business card, you'll be added to our day. <laughs> <laughs> but we also, as mentioned, um, we use press conferences, media lists, um, church organizations, and we've also now garnered relationships with real estate associations who also have their networks. So we're using networks of networks to get the word out. But honestly, you know, everyone knows that if they want to drive, they need to go to driver's training, right? Mm -hmm. They know, right? But I think when they think of home ownership, they really should also think, gosh, I should go take a home buyer education class and get help through a housing counseling agency. So I wish there was some kind of an incentive, a uh, greater incentive. And I know like, for example, Wells Fargo through their Lyft program, when they introduced their down payment, they did say require that you go to a housing counseling agency. So I hope that there are more of those kind of institutions because inevitably some of the lenders um, who need that certificate from us for their client, they send us after everything is done and they just need that certificate. But when the client comes to our home by education class, there's kind of a, almost a moment of kind of uh, wishfulness that they had actually come to us at the beginning because I think that they would now have a better understanding and know what all the options exist. So I wish that there was a greater partnership between the financial institutions, government agency, to help get the word out, because it is truly uh, impactful in what they can afford, what they can really get Plus to. the potential homebuyer has exactly. a goal now, right? Exactly. And they know what they need to target. So what Hybrid is amazing in her organization, which I've had the pleasure of working with, it's intimate. Um, the homeowners that they help with education, they become homeowners, she has a high percentage. And also, it's word of mouth, how she sustains herself, when she's talking the top down, she's talking White House and down, like the president, uh, for several administrations. But more importantly, when you help that family, they refer you back. And that's how that word of mouth. And she does several languages. You do Korean, you do Spanish, English, Chinese, and she does all languages to help the communities that she serves. And it's kind of interesting in terms of untapped markets. I believe, again, uh, minority communities, immigrant communities, truly are untapped. So when we, uh, last year, we did a home ownership fair with the Chinese community and then also with the African immigrant community. Mm -hmm. And both communities, they, it felt like money coming down from heaven. They were so grateful that this, this type of resource even existed. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking it's not just the African immigrant or you know, Chinese, there's a whole wealth. I mean, California is like, what is it, United Nations, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, sure. seriously. And so each of those markets, I think you, without, I mean, if you use a universal outreach, it just doesn't get to them. Because the trust factor, I think, is also an important piece. And, and, and that you mentioned, you know, I think that's real important, because, you know, I know I work outside of California, and I don't know how many of you are also in other states. But I think it's really important to understand, and I think the first place is, there are groups out there like Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, and I want to give um, you know credit to those organizations because they actually do a lot of work in making sure that you know minorities, women, are uh, know of all the available programs, right? That that are there, and you know, for any of you who are not aware, I mean, you go, it's free. You can actually download information. You can actually understand and platform, if you know a zip code that you are interested in, you can actually pull that zip code in and figure out the, addre and, and the address of your home and determine what type of down payment programs are available because your organization sounds phenomenal. And there's various programs all across the country that also offer these down payment programs that people are not aware of. So, you know, education is key. I think it's really key also. I mean, how many of you have ever did a first time homeowner seminar? Because I didn't, when my first home, I had no clue what I was doing. 
I wasn't in real estate, and I never did a first-time home buyer seminar, nor did I understand the process that was required or the commitment or the long-term responsibility or the fact that you also have to make sure that you have money saved for emergencies and for repairs and things that you need to do. So I think it's really important that those uh, webinars and seminars really get disseminated across the public. And then for the bankers out there, I think it's really important that we also make sure that we, uh, we let our communities know that 20% down payment is not a requirement, right? It's an ideal situation, but I think a lot of people think that they have to put 20% down when purchasing a home. And that's because every time you go online to a web page, to any website for US Bank or anybody else, the 20% the is the number they want in the window, and it's because it increases the amount of money that you can purchase. But I'd rather see a 5% number down so that people can see that that's actual, a, you know, an opportunity for them to be able to save that amount of money. So I think those are things that we could change, right, in our industry that will help create more opportunities for more home buyers, especially for first-time home buyers and minorities. And by the way, first-time home buyers are the catch-all because if you look at right now people staying in homes 10 years. You know, your repeat buyers, the millennial opportunities that are out there, they're your buyers right now. And they're made of women and minorities. And, you know, 42% is the number. 45 with the Gen Z generation coming behind them. And so we got to look at those opportunities for our communities because that's really where we're going to be able to uh, resell and create more uh, business for our future. You know, not just one time, but for our future. I wanted to add two things. First, there are more than 2,400 down payment assistance and grant programs across the country. And so being aware of that, and there's actually downpaymentassistance.com so that you can find it. You can pull people off the shelf that you've been trying to work with and trying to help, and that really does make a huge difference. But it is so important because of technology, and especially with it being the younger generations, they're already aware of some of the stuff that's out there. Not all of it, but if you don't, if you're not aware when you get in front of them, the number one complaint from the consumer used to be that they didn't have enough communication. Now the number one complaint is they feel like they know more than the person that's representing them. And that should never, ever happen. It should never happen. So I think in the interest of time, because I really think this is important, Teresa, I'd love for you to share a success story in your company, because I think that will paint the picture for people to really understand what is possible. And Vanessa, I'd love for you to do the same, okay? So a success story. We've had so many, uh, you know, as far as, I'm going to give you one for woman owner, because I think a lot of, because for us, it's also about bringing in women businesses. And we brought in Kathy Raven out of Charlotte. Uh, she is a real living broker that started with Real Living Carolinas, and she has grown her company from 20 agents to over 100 agents in the last year. And she is an amazing entrepreneur. She's woman owned. And she's taken advantage of all the opportunities that are available that you've heard from our small business administration representatives that were up here today discussing the great opportunities that are for women and making sure that when you have group moves into your area, when you have relocations into your area, that you work with those third party companies to let them know that, hey, I'm a woman owned operator. If you're a third party company that's representing, let's say Macy's or representing a government entity, they require and they look for companies that are women or minority owned so that they can uh, select a box that says, hey, I'm sending this business for all the people that are moving here that need to buy homes that are moving with our company to your company. And she's done an incredible job in capturing that market. So that's one area. As far as homeowners, uh, I used to run HUD, uh, the HUD division for my company. And there's no greater satisfaction than to help somebody purchase that first home and be able to, um, to you know, to, to see the, the, I mean, there is nothing like it. The, uh, the uh, ability uh, of, of, of that accomplishment of one winning the bid and also creating the opportunity when you, when you first clo do that closing, you go to their home and hand them the keys and that they walk in and they're crying and running through the house. So I think that with our, uh, and I've had that experience on the local level to do that. So, uh, especially with a family, a Latino family, that it was their first home and they cried and they ran through the house and, you know, just, 
you know, and thanking you, you know, for the fact that they now are uh, able to have that home ownership and the American dream. So that's a big one for me. Thank you. So I, I have like hundreds of examples, but I'm gonna start with one that's personal for me. I started as an originator because it was an amazing job that you're able to help someone's dreams come true. And I was always that one loan officer that wanted to work the first time home buyer, wanted to work the high touch loans that I say with layered financing, I'm that person. I didn't do it for the money, I did it because the acknowledgement and helping that family become first time home buyers. So this one young lady, her name is Elvia Soto, uh, went to New Economics for Women, a nonprofit here in Los Angeles, because this is my territory here in LA. I actually live up the street. She came to me, she was college educated, she had taken the classes, and she wanted to buy her first house. And this was over 20 years ago. Fast forward, Elvia has grown her empire, has multiple properties throughout here in Southern California, and I've always been her lender of choice. Regardless that my, I'm not originating anymore, I've always paid forward and she's uh, kept building her empire. A month ago or two, because I'm bad with time, <laughs> happened with age, a couple of months ago she called me and now she's in New York. She's like, Vanessa, my firm moved me to New York, I'm thinking about buying a condo over there, I need help. So who do I call? I get one of my wonderful loan officers. He helped her get pre-qualified. She's in that process in New York, because that's also high cost. But what came out of that is that her brother now wanted to buy, so he got a purchase, and it's that relationship. This is over a 20 year friendship that now I know Elvia as a friend. Her father was a roofer, now he's my personal roofer. But you just extend that family, and that to me is success, because no matter what, Elvia is gonna be a friend for life, and I'm so incredibly proud of her that she's grown her career, and she has multiple properties, and I know her net worth, and she's just the hardworking, dynamic, single, independent woman, and to me, to know her family is a privilege and it's an honor. So that to me is a success story. Awesome, awesome. So um, before we close out, sustainability. How do we get to keep people in these homes and you were starting on it, so I'd like you to complete. Sure, um, actually when we first started our organization, as mentioned for the uh, Korean slash Asian community, faith community, we were not even on the radar screen. And we decided to go to Washington, D.C. and got all the White House faith leaders to be in the room and we were able to elevate to the point where in um, 2000, I believe it was 15, I got invited to be in the Oval Office with President Obama. Um, and so that was one of those bucket list moments. Um, <laughs> I tried to look very dignified in the room, but as soon as I got back to my hotel, <laughs> I thank the Lord because when he called me to a ministry, I thought he was sentencing me to the dungeon. I uh, never imagined that he would take me all the way to the White House. But I, I think again, in terms of sustainability, it's really all about uh, synergy partnerships. And so I think whether it's the partnership with government, because I always tell our um, students, you know what, if you have a goal or you have a need, you should think there must be someone out there who cares about my goal or problem. So government, they have a vested interest in seeing people become homeowners. There's a greater tax base, greater stability, you know, greater education, blah, 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 right? Banks, obviously, greater mortgage to come <laughs> after the first mortgage, right? All the money to be earned. So again, there's a lot of different stakeholders who have that vested interest, and I think it's, again, bringing these more of these kind of convenings that create policies and partnerships that allow for that sustainability and getting the word out that there are more than, more programs beyond the 20%. You could have a zero down payment program, doctors, low program, I mean like all kinds that are out there, but there needs to be more of them. Wonderful. <laughs> so, um, last piece of advice for everybody here to get more educated, maybe where you find your own information. Let's go all the way across. So I find everything on Google. <laughs> <laughs> and if I, Google doesn't know, then it's Siri. <laughs> So uh, seriously, Down Payment Resource is a great way to start, downpaymentresource.org, because it talks about all the down payments in every market. So whether you're local or different parts of the US, it does give us options. And then I also look to my GSEs with FannieMae.com and Freddie Mac because they have free 
well, where's my girlfriend Cassandra? She'd be like, free? Free, free, free. Yeah, free, free. <laughs> yeah. But um, they do credit smart, so these tools are out there, and of course, my bank, US Bank, also has the resources, but they're out there. Most institutions have free information for everyone to be educated, whether you want to buy a home or you're thinking about it, you know, please reach out to me. I'm here to help everyone. Thank you. And of course, you know, I've given the, uh, the, the uh, websites too that are really good. I also think you need to make sure that if you haven't taken a look at the uh, data that, and the information that's pulled together in this, is the homeowner, the report that uh, is created here, that's a great tool. I mean, looking through it, it's amazing. It touches every single industry. And if you can't find the answer there, you need to let Desiree know because she'll find the answer for you. <laughs> so that is one to write. She'll find it and she'll have it in the next issue. So make sure that you absolutely use that tool and know that we are here as a resource to help you in any way that we can and direct you to the right people that can help you, whether it's down payment, whether it's lending, whether it's a realtor, we're here to assist in any way that we can. I do want to add that, um, again, there are all these resources, but as a consumer, it's confusing. Even in, like, there's like, as you say, 2,400 down payment assistance, but it's not very clear when you go to the website where you begin. So again, going to a housing counseling agency that's HUD approved will be able to help you navigate. And last but not least, it's really, again, at the end of the day about relationships. So coming to these type of conferences and meeting the decision makers, <laughs> hearing the testimonies, um, and having that trust, I think, is where it leads to the, the prize. The I love that. You know, FDIC.gov forward slash money smart. If you're a broker, you can actually get an education so that you can um, educate other people. And it's good for everybody and they have it for the aging population and they have it so specific so that you can really get smarter about money, which I think is so important. But it's so important to stay ahead of the curve on being educated. Thank you so much. This was really wonderful. Thank you. I'd like to make one comment real quick. Pro relationships. Um, we heard Dr. Alexis Crow yesterday, speaker, or yesterday morning. You know, I got her from a referral from my gardener for 30 years, who referred me to a Japanese family office to show them property in Northern California, Southern California, who then referred me to PWC, who then referred me to Dr. Alexis Crow, <laughs> who's going to join the NDLC Council. Yes. Wonderful. Yay. So when Kate Penn and I met four years ago, about there, she's the vein and cloth that pushes me to go further and further. You talk to who, you got who, you got who. And we have the same conviction and passion to go under, to find and bring and to elevate. When she talks about to get it to here, we have to start here. And I spent a lot of time in this, in this organization dealing with here to bring them up, but I realized if I brought it from the top down, they would come. And hence, we thank um, her for ABC News, for Veronica being here yesterday, for her relationship. Uh, her impact of what she did in DC for the White House is I sat on the, the White House for women for the committee to making sure that women were sustainable. And to get where I am today is because of relationships like we have developed with everyone and, and Tammy down the end, they'll see if we can go down the line, is this is where this organization's about getting everyone on stage to connect and, and continue to not just know that, hi, I've seen you for the last, you know, five times, ten times every year, is that we get to know each other deeper and deeper. And, she, and hey, Penn, I'm going to say, you and I need to sit down and really dive deeper because of the work that you've done and continue to do. We all scale so fast and a different, and we need to integrate more. So that's what the whole purpose is for everyone in the room, is I just want to reiterate relationships, 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 and not just be how's the kids, how's the wife, how's the kid, you know, husband, everyone else. It's got to be deep what we can do to really change the narrative. So thank you very much. I think that was awesome. You know, the whole entire thing with relationships is adding value to the other person's life and finding out what their dreams are and helping them achieve it. And if you'll do that, then they'll be more than happy to do the same in return. You've got to get interested in what they're in. Networking so often is just somebody exchanging business cards and telling people what they do. Go a whole lot deeper and make it personal. If you put yourself in their shoes, you'll excel. Thank you, ladies. You were amazing. Yeah.